Hey folks, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make this deep space nebula scene. It's an easy scene to make, it renders super fast, it's quite a versatile scene, you can do all sorts with this. So without further ado, let's get to it. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to Edit, Preferences, go to Add-ons and type in node for node wrangler and enable the node wrangler here click this button and click save preferences and that will ensure that the node wrangler is enabled every time you load blender the second thing you'll do go over to my patreon sign up as a free member and download this 16k 360 nebula environment texture pack there's 11 environment textures in total each have a jpeg and exr format there is another pack down here you can download this too if you like it's all free and the reason i've got jpegs and exrs is exr will give you more dynamic range in the shader editor when we're playing with things like hue saturation and gamma it's slightly heavier on your gpu whereas with jpeg there isn't any dynamic range to play with but it should save memory on your gpu so download all these whether you want jpegs or exrs i'm going to use the xrs for this tutorial the other thing you'll need is scroll down until you see this geometry node particle generator click this button here and that should download the particle generator. Save those assets in a memorable file location. If you want to learn how to make this, I have got a tutorial for that. So you just click this YouTube link here and it will show you how to make the particle generator in this tutorial. So the first thing I'll do, I'm going to select the cube. I'm going to hit delete. By the way, I'm in layout view here. I'll then drag my cursor to the bottom left until I see this crosshair. I'll left click and I'll drag it up and I'm going to change this to the shader editor. I'm going to flip from object to world. And this is where we'll enable our environment texture where we've got the node wrangler enabled i can click the background and hit ctrl t and that will add a texture coordinate a mapping and environment texture node just going to drag this across over to here i'll then click open locate the file where you saved the 360 nebula environment textures choose your first environment texture i'm going to go for nebula environment 15.exr i'll then click open image i'm going to change this from cycles to ev i'm going to disable shadows i'm going to disable ray tracing I just drag this down i'm going to hit n over my shader editor to get rid of the n panel i'm then going to go into rendered view okay looking good so far i might change my viewport camera so i'm going to hit n to open up the n panel and i'm going to click the view tab and i'm going to change my focal length to 24 mil just so we've got a wider field of view i'll then hit n to close that end panel i might disable my overlays just so i can see what i'm doing now i don't want the emission values to affect anything in the scene so i'm going to hit shift a go to input and i'm going to choose light path i'll then hit shift a converter and we choose math i'll then change it from add to multiply i'll drag the is camera ray into the bottom socket and i'm going to plug the value into the strength of the background i'll then turn the background value up to two it's a bit brighter there excellent so now we're done with the world shader so i'll click this button here where it says world and i'm going to change it back to object i'll re-enable my overlays as well i'm just going to go to viewport shading i hit shift a go to mesh and we'll choose icosphere i hit numpad period to zoom into that icosphere i'll then expand the icosphere options down here i'll change the subdivisions to four i'll then right click click shade smooth excellent i'll just collapse the menu down here i'll then go to my shader editor click new to add a new material delete the principal bsdf i'll then then hit shift a go to shader and we'll choose emission shader i'm going to plug that into the surface of the material output shift a go to texture and we'll choose environment texture and with the environment texture selected i'm going to hit ctrl t and that will add a texture coordinate and a mapping node by default the texture coordinates comes from this generated output here i'm going to change it from generated to normal i'll then click open navigate to where you've saved your 360 nebula environment textures i'm going to choose nebula environment 7.exr for this one I'll then plug the color from that environment texture into the color of the emission shader. Okay, this is what we've got so far. Again, I don't want any of the emission values from this object to affect any other object in the scene. I'm going to hit Shift A, Input, and we choose Light Path. Shift A, Converter, Math. Change the math from Add to Multiply. And I'm going to plug Is Camera Ray into the bottom socket. I'll then plug the value from the Multiply into the strength of the emission. And maybe I'll set a strength of 2. Now we just need some transparency on this. So I'm going to hit Shift A, go to Shader, and we choose Transparent. Shift A, Shader, and we choose Mix Shader. Plug the Transparent into the bottom socket. Shift A, Converter, and we choose Math Node. We're going to change this to Multiply. I'm going to plug the Environment Texture into the top socket. I'm going to keep it set at 0.5, and I'll plug the value from the Multiply Node into the factor of the Mix Shader. I'll then hit Shift A, Converter, we choose Color Ramp and I'll pop that in between the multiply and the mix shader. Click this arrow here and we'll select flip color ramp. And now if I drag the black value across, 
you can see more and more of our image is popping through. Maybe I can set this to ease. I'll set the black value position to 0.01. Okay, now I'm gonna go over here to my material settings and I'm gonna change it from divid to blended. Excellent, I just increase this window. I hit N to open up my end panel. I'll click item and I'm gonna change the dimensions to 250 meters. Now we are gonna have these clipping issues where it completely disappears from the scene. That's an easy enough fix. We just click this view button here and under the clip start and clip end. For the clip end, I'm gonna select 10,000 meters. We're probably gonna to have to do the same for the camera. So select your camera in your outliner and with your camera data over here selected, we'll set the clip end to 10,000 meters. I'm gonna change the focal length of my camera as well while I'm here to 24 mil and that will match the focal length of our scene. I'll then hit N to close the end panel. I'm gonna select this object here. So by default, our normals are pointing outwards on this object. We want them to point inwards considering we're gonna be inside this object. So with this object selected, I'm gonna hit Control A, apply the scale. I'll then tab into edit mode. I'll make sure everything's selected. I'm gonna hit Alt N and we'll choose flip for flip normals. Tab out of edit mode and now that should be perfect. Excellent. Let's get on with the next nebula. So I'm gonna hit Shift D to duplicate that sphere. I hit Escape to cancel it back into its original position. I'm gonna hit S2 and Enter, and that will scale that object up by two. I'll then hit Control A and apply the scale. And for the material, I'm gonna click this number two here, and that will make it its own unique material. I'll then navigate to my environment texture. I'm gonna click this cross button, click Open, navigate to where you saved your 360 Nebula environment textures. And for this one, I'm gonna choose Nebula Environment 9.exr. Click Open, excellent. We've got two layers going on here. I'm gonna add one more layer. So I'm gonna hit Shift D to duplicate, Escape, to cancel it back in its original position. S to enter to scale it up by two. Control A and apply the scale. Again, I'm gonna click this two to make it its own unique material. I'll then get rid of that environment texture. I'll click open, locate to your 360 Nebula environment textures. And for this one, I'm gonna choose Nebula environment 16.exr. I'll then click open, excellent. So now we've got three layers of Nebula going on here. And if I go into rendered view, we've also got our original nebula environment texture there. So now if I hit numpad zero to go into camera view, I'm gonna select my camera. I'll go to my object data over here. And with the camera selected, I'm gonna set the X, Y, and Z location to zero. I'm gonna set the X rotation to 90. Y rotation will be zero and the Z rotation will be zero. There's several ways we can animate this camera. We could animate the location over a period of time. If I was to take my cursor over the location transform, and hit I and then I could move it 130 frames hit G Y bring it forward and then hit I again over the location and then if I push play it will animate that path which I just keyframed I don't want to do that but instead I want to animate my camera procedurally so on frame one I'm gonna hit I for the location I'll also hover over rotation and hit I I then drag this up I'll change it from my shader editor to graph editor I'm gonna click modifiers I'll expand these options here to open up my keyframes under X location I'm gonna click add modifier and I'll choose noise maybe I can change my end frame to something like 960 and if I push play you can see the camera's moving let's just zoom in over here so we can see what we're doing a bit better so I want to change the scale of this noise modifier to something like 100 so it's moving slowly I'll then increase the strength to maybe 10 maybe I can increase it to 25 and increase the scale to 500 if I hit numpad zero to go into camera view, you should be able to see kind of a parallax effect happening. It's very subtle there. Okay, I'll skip back to frame one. I'm gonna click this button here and I'll copy the modifier. I'll then select my Y location. I'll click paste and I'm gonna change the offset to something completely random, maybe something around there. I'll then click this button to copy that modifier again. I'm gonna click Z location. I'll then click paste. And now if I push play, it should be moving on X, Y, and Z. Excellent. I'll then select my X Euler -like rotation keyframe. I'm gonna click Add modifier, we'll go to noise. I'll set the scale to 250 and maybe the strength to 10. Let's just see what that does. It might be a bit erratic, but yeah, that's way too much. Set the strength to one, maybe something like that. I'll also change the offset. So I'm gonna change it to a random number. So I'm gonna skip back to frame one. I'm gonna click copy modifier. I'll go to Y rotation, click paste. I'm gonna change the offset to something random just so it's a different noise pattern. I'll then copy that modifier. I'm gonna go to Z rotation and I'll click paste. 
and we'll change the offset again something completely random if you want it to loop in your scene you take your end frame and your start frame and I'll just show you on the X location for example I'll just mute all the other keyframes we just keep the X keyframe in position so if you wanted to loop this with the X location on the noise modifier I'm going to click restrict frame range and start frame will be frame one the end frame will be how many frames you've got on your timeline so I've got 960 and I want to blend in let's say over 120 frames and blend out over 120 frames you see these peaks here it's a bit sharp for the blending so maybe I can set this to 440 there we go that's completely smoothed it out so if I take this over here and I'll push play you can see it should loop perfectly and that will ensure that you've got a nice smooth animation you'd need to do that restrict frame range on each of your keyframes I'm going to turn that off for this one I'll then change it from the graph editor back to my shader editor in fact I'm going to bring this window down I'm just going to go into viewport shading I'll re-enable my overlays and now I'll append for particle generator so I'm going to hit f4 click append locate the folder where you saved the real particle generator it should be something like this let's just go to list view so it should be particle generator Fotini by design YouTube tutorial project file so double click that then go into object and then go into particle generator GN I think that's the one and then append that object so select that click append I just hit numpad one to go into front view I'm going to mute my icospheres except for the first icosphere which is the smallest one and with my particle generator selected I'm going to go to my modifiers and for plus x I'm going to type in 100 and for negative x I'm going to type in negative 100 the same as y plus y is 100 negative y is negative 100 z plus is 100 and negative z should be negative 100 let's just make these bigger so we can see what we're doing now if I push play you can see they're all moving so I'm going to turn the z speed down to zero I'll navigate to where it says wobble and I'm going to set that to zero so they're all completely stationary so now if I hit numpad zero go in my camera view you can see we're moving about in the scene I need to reactivate the modifiers for my other keyframes for my camera so I'm going to select my camera I'm going to change it from shader editor to graph editor and I'll just re-enable all of these excellent change that back to shader editor I just scroll down so now if I push play you can see it's moving about quite nicely excellent if I select my fire particle in my hierarchy it's not really the right color for stars so I'll navigate to the material of the fire particle I'm just going to change the colors of these maybe I'll choose sort of a light pink for this one I'm going to choose a lighter orangey yellow maybe for this one I'm going to choose kind of a bluish tone something around there and for this one I'm going to go for like a pastel green something around there and also for the fire particle object itself so with the fire particle selected and my cursor and the 3d viewport I'm going to hit numpad period and it will zoom in to that object I'm going to click add modifier we we'll go to generate and I'm going to choose subdivision surface I'm going to set this to level 2 I'll also right click and click shade smooth now I can mute the fire particle in viewport and in rendering I'll then hit numpad 0 to go into camera view I'm going to select my particle generator and I'm going to reduce the size to 0.05 I'll also increase the density to 2500 maybe I can increase it to 5000 particles I'm going to re-enable my icospheres I'm going to go into viewport shading I'll just go over to my compositing tab I'm going to click use nodes and with the render layers selected I'm going to hit Control shift left click and that will add a viewer node I'll then hold down shift right click and drag and that will join those two together drag this across over to here I'm going to drag this down and I'm going to drag this across I'm going to select view I'll go back to my layout I'm going to hit F12 renders out really quickly excellent less than a second 0.46 of a second I then close that window I'm going to go to my compositor I'm going to click fit so it should fit in the window I then hit shift A go to filter and I'm going to choose glare I'm going to pop that in here I'm going to keep it set to streaks I'll then change the threshold to 0.6 I'll then set the quality from medium to high I then hit shift D to duplicate that node I'm going to pop it in between there I'm going to change it from streaks to bloom maybe I can add a vignette so I'm going to hit shift A go to mask and we'll choose box mask with the box mask selected you'll see this box frame here so I'm just going to increase the size of the box till there's a little bit of edge on either side and I'll do the same for the vertical something around there I'll then hit shift A go to color choose mix and mix color I'm going to pop that into there I'll pop the box mask into the mix factor I'll then take the image result from the glare 
unplug it from the top socket, plug it into the bottom socket. Um, for the top socket of the mix color, I'm going to turn to black. So we've got a frame. Now what we need to do is blur that frame. So I'm going to hit Shift A, go to Filter, and we choose Blur and choose Blur. Pop that in between the box mask and the color mix. I then change it from Gaussian to Fast Gaussian, enable Relative, increase the X and Y to, let's say, 25% see what that does okay I'm happy with that so this is without and this is with excellent go to layout don't forget to save your file so go to file save as I'm going to save mine as like and subscribe thanks folks you absolute legends and then go to output now you can save this as an image sequence or a movie clip if you're going to save it as an image sequence I would personally save it as open EXR and change the codec from zip lossless to DWAA lossy that will decrease your file size and increase the dynamic range when you bring it into a video editor alternatively where this renders pretty fast I'm going to save mine as a movie clip so I'm going to change it from open EXR to FFmpeg I'll then go to encoding, change the container from Matroski to MPEG-4. I'm going to keep the video codec set to H.264. Medium quality should be sufficient. Choose a file output where you want your movie clip or image sequences to be saved. I'm going to save mine in a folder called like and subscribe. Okay, so before we render this, there's one thing I forgot to do. And we're going to select the camera. We'll go to the camera data over here. We'll enable depth of field. I'm going to expand the depth of field options there. I'll set the f-stop to 0.1 for now. I'm going to increase the blades to 16. I'm going to choose the focal distance of 200 meters. So now any stars that are near the camera should be out of focus. Just gives the illusion of a bit more depth in the scene. Maybe I can actually reduce my star count as well. So I'll just enable this icosphere. I'll then select the particle generator. I'm going to go to my modifiers. I'm going to change it from 5000 to 2500. I then go back to my output, make sure all my output settings are okay. Just as a note, your final render result may experience flickering of the stars. If that's the case, go to your compositing and we'll create a deflicker filter. That should be easy enough. The problem occurs is because the brightness of the stars changes on each frame and these two nodes here amplify that problem. So I'm going to hit Shift A, go to Filter, Blur and choose Blur. We're going to change this from Gaussian to fast Gaussian. We'll set it to relative and we're going to change the X and Y to 0 0.25. I'll then pop that between the render layers and the first layer node. As you can see, it's blurred everything. This should equal out the fluctuation in brightness of the stars. And all we have to do now is mix that with the original render layer. So I'm going to hit Shift A, go to Color, and we'll choose Mix and Mix Color. I'll then pop that in between the Glare node and the Mix Color node. Plug the Glare into the bottom socket of that Mix node. And we'll take the image from the render layers into the top socket of this Mix Color node. I'll set the Mix Type to Lighten. And I'm going to change the factor to 0.5. I'll go back to my layout tab over here. I'm going to go to my output settings and I'm actually going to change my file format from FFmpeg to OpenEXR with a codec of DWAA Lossy. And then it's simply a case of hitting Control F12 and that will render out your image sequence. That's the tutorial in a nutshell. If you found this content useful, hit like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. So that's all for now, folks. Have a great day, level up, and thanks for watching.